All right, guys. So I'm going to do a little bit of stuff on the frame tonight. Uh, one of my buddies um, was in helping me with it. And um, he got a little bit of stuff done. appreciate that. Um, so I didn't film and he was doing it during the day. And just one of those things can't always film everything. But um, most of this stuff is pretty simple. So we put uh, sway bar end links. I got the new springs. These are out of a 1500 series um, pickup. Uh, brand new. Um, I bought them from Rock Auto. A lot of this stuff is so cheap from Rock Auto. Can't beat that. Like even me as a shop, I can't buy this stuff as cheap from my suppliers as I can from Rock Auto. So is what it is. Um, sway bar, new sway bar end links. Uh, we put a fourth gen steering setup on it. Uh, this diff is out of a 2001. I had to look back in my paperwork. It's out of a 2001. But the, I wanted the newer style brakes, and I'll show you why. And the newer style front ends for the newer style brakes. Um, I got a new um, steering box from the boys at CanCraft. Uh, they're in British Columbia, Canada, uh, just uh, a few hours away from where we are. Awesome steering box. Basically a comparable setup to Redhead. Um, for you guys that are in Canada, if you guys hit the, if you hit them up, CanCraft Steering, um, they can hook you up and the prices are good. You know, like it's it's comparable to um, price and quality to a uh, redhead. Um, but for us in Canada, the shipping back and forth and the exchange just kills us. Like a redhead steering box turns into, like if you're not sitting in the core back, turns into $800. So it's just crazy. Um, but anyways, that's what we're using for a steering box. This is a three to one uh, ratio. Uh, because I wanted the, the steering um, relatively um, responsive. Um, so we did a three to one. Something I did notice, and I didn't notice this before till after we cleaned this off. Somebody put new ball joints in it, but they actually spot welded the ball joint in, which doesn't really scare me. Um, when I go to replace these ball joints, I'm gonna do an oversized ball joint, and I'll do a video when I do that, but there's nothing wrong with them. They're tight, they're not moving. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna leave that alone. But just so you guys, if you guys are doing it, uh, beware if you're they're loose, you either need to knurl the hole, knurl the ball joint, buy oversized ball joints. There is a few companies, uh, EMF, for you guys that have never dealt with EMF, you can, for these trucks, you can buy ball joints from EMF that are oversized and the factory ones. So go hit them up. Um, you can hit them up if you're looking for an awesome ball joint, adjustable, rebuildable, all that stuff, best quality. Um, actually, I've been dealing with them for years, uh, friends with Aaron and Clay. Um, but anyways, there again, I won't get uh, carried away here. Um, but anyways, that's what I will be replacing them with when I do replace them. Um, I'm pretty sure this thing's not going to get, this thing's going to be a car with a box. So like it, it doesn't need anything crazy. I'm never probably ever going to wear them out. Uh, like I said, we are doing a, a fourth gen or a third gen steering uh, track bar. I just haven't got to putting that in. I just wanted to show you guys the process or the, the progress. Now we have stripped all of the brake lines, fuel lines, all that stuff off, um, except for this line here, um, which is the uh, vacuum um, line for your four wheel drive uh, actuator. Um, I didn't want to take that off. Um, I'm not pulling the cross member or anything. So I figured we'll just leave that. Um, as long as it's not broke, I did bend it, I think, uh, moving stuff around. But anyways, uh, so we got the rear brakes ripped off. Got another set of, uh, of mount plates, but we have an issue with the diff. So we're gonna have to pull that diff out and I'm gonna put a different one in. Um, I have a few of these diffs. This one I bought um, and there's something wrong. So you guys will be able to hear it. So I don't know what's wrong. I'm not even gonna rip it apart. Um, I'm gonna plug the hole up, put the, the, the uh, um, calipers and the uh, um, rotors back on and I'll put a different diff in it and then when so when I redo uh, when I do some a bunch of stuff to my three-quarter ton my, my 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 daily driver truck um, I wanted to do a 410 gear set with disc brake on the back uh, so we'll just use this diff and we'll rebuild this one so it's not a big deal now on with the next side of the thing here so what we're gonna do on this thing is I'm gonna upgrade the brakes. So if you use these diffs, so you're, I wanna say it's 99 and up, but I could be wrong. But if it has a bolt on, um, a bolt on caliper bracket like this, so it has these two bolts here, you can take the 
rotor and caliper and pads from an early third gen. so o three, o four, o five i always order them for an or o four um you can take that brake setup front and rear as long as you're disc brake obviously um you can take the bigger brakes and they will bolt right on so just to give you guys an idea how the size is different i honestly never measured but ah, the rotors that were actually on this thing weren't that bad but so oh i guess i should say so obviously the new one is the fourth or the third gen style so that's what we're getting for we're getting an extra inch of rotor which is nice because it'll give us more braking and these rotors actually are in good shape other than they're full of mud um, but you know nature of the beast when you buy used stuff so we're gonna get i'm gonna get the camera set up and uh, we'll put this thing together i'm gonna do most of this in not time lapse so i can talk a little bit for you guys that have maybe never done brakes um, but I will, I have to do brakes on my three quarter ton and it has the old style diff so I could be able to show you guys the difference. So, um, like I said, um, I, I, I do have the other style on my three quarter ton, um, or what I call the three quarter ton or white truck. Sometimes I call it, which is ironic because a bunch of my trucks are white, but I can show you on that because I need to put new pads on it so I can show you the difference. And I'm actually going to be doing some stuff to that probably this weekend. Um, it needs some stuff so that I can continue to drive it. I got a rear pinion seal leak. Um, I'm going to actually pull the uh, lift block out. Um, and we're going to do a couple things to the front end. We're going to lower the front end back down, blah, blah, blah. But anyways. So we're not getting too carried away. I am going to do some stuff to that. Um, there's a couple videos guys asked about uh, so I'll probably do those this weekend too So I don't know how much we're gonna get done to this. I would like to get the head finished uh, Which is the P pump uh, six seven series for you guys that haven't are are watching this series, but not that series Go over because that will be the engine for this truck Trying to kind of keep everything a little bit separate just for you know guys that don't want to watch everything now Something that I do as I use anti-seize copper nickel doesn't matter to me um, but I use anti seize on everything, um, especially being that we're in the rust, in the rust belt. But you just put it along that edge, and then when you want to go take this stuff apart again, years down the road, it will come apart. I know some guys don't like using it. By all means, if you don't like using it, don't use it. If you do, use it, whatever, I don't care. So, here's the rotor. Not rocket science for I don't think that mo I would imagine most of you guys are gonna know how to do this stuff. So I'm not gonna go super in depth in it. But I'm gonna steer this over so it's easier to get at that. Now, new calipers, and you do need to do the new calipers or the bigger calipers, obviously, when you're doing the um the bigger uh rotors. Now So, I uh, will put the bracket on here. There again, I use anti seize and Loctite on like everything. Now, a trick that you can do actually, maybe I should throw it on there. A trick you can do. So, uh, if you take a nut, so this is a trick for you guys that have never done brakes maybe before or have never seen the trick. If you're having, you know, the rotors kind of walk cattywampus on you. You take your real nut, obviously you want to make sure it's not one that has a, a cap on the top of it. Because if it does, you knock the cap off. But I always have a bunch of extra wheel nuts laying around. Um, but basically you can do this. Now something that you do, if you listen, you can hear it touching this backing plate. You probably will have to... Sounds like we're gonna have to do a little surgery there, but we'll put it together for now. Um, I, I plan on taking this apart before we're done anyway, so 
not too worried about it. Now, caliper bracket, um, bolts, I always put, there again, I put anti seize on them. Some guys put Loctite on these. Um, I don't think you need to. If you want to, put Loctite on them. Um, Loctite will kind of do the same thing as anti seize anyway. Um, because you, you, well, keep it from seizing because the Loctite fills the groove of the thread and that's the reason that it does come apart. So, uh, anti-seize does do a little bit of that job as well, just not like Loctite does. So, anyways, take this, bolt her on. Now obviously you want to make sure these are tight. If there's a truck in the way, you can't do it with your foot. But being that I've been working all day, I'm tired, so I'm gonna do it with my foot. I honestly don't know what the torque on these is. I always just do them tight. But I've done, I've done uh, lots of breaks. So that's tight. Now, so putting brake pads on, there again, is not rocket science, but for you guys that have never done it, there again, we will put them on. Now these are uh, your uh, shims or anti-squeals. Basically they keep, these, all they do, there's actually other names for them. Like I said, I've been up, I've been up for a while. What are we going to call these today? Uh, a pad absorbent shim. Weird. But anyways, basically what they are is they're supposed to help the pad from vibrating inside there. And then it also keeps it from wearing the bracket and wearing the caliper. So. These ones already have them in there because we're putting new calipers on. Now, if you were just doing pads, you would get new ones of these. If yours are in good shape, I really, I usually reuse those ones um, as long as they're in good shape. But you can do whatever you want. Now, we're going to get the squeedy squeedy. So... Not all pads are going to have squealers on both sides. Um, so you see this one has a squealer here. It has a squealer right here. This one doesn't. I always put these on the inside because the inside pad tends to wear faster than the outside pad. So there again, something else that I like to do. These have an anti-squeal on them. That's what this piece is. Now if you do have squealing brakes, what you can do is you can put um, a little bit of silicone on here. If you put a like or a couple little strips kind of idea in here, it will uh, it'll keep the vi the pad from vibrating. But usually these do a pretty good job. But what I don't what I like to do is where these run, where this runs inside here, um, I put a little bit of anti seize. Um, and the reason for that is is that the it doesn't seize up in there. It won't get rust in there on you because if you get rust in there. Then the shoe, or the, sorry, the pad gets stuck. And when the pad gets stuck, then they wear funny and blah, blah, blah. So, a little bit of anti-seize. A little bit of anti-seize goes a long way. We'll probably use, building this truck, we'll probably use at least, oh, these shims don't stay on there very good. Um, we'll probably use at least a whole one of those to build this truck, if not maybe more than that. So... Now, these aren't usually hard to get in, but now that I said that, I will, they'll fight me. Oh, there we go. Sometimes it's just your own fault. Sometimes they don't fit, but the bracket just Sometimes you gotta kind of monkey with it a little bit. So, pads in. Now, um, something that I like to do is, 
Um, make sure that your, your, now these are new, so they're going to be good, but make sure that your um, sliders are moving. Not obviously the bolt doesn't have anything to do with that, but make sure that these are sliding back and forth with res no resistance. Because if there's resistance there, um, you will have problems. And obviously you don't want that to happen, especially if you're putting all brand new brakes on your truck, because that sucks. Ouch. Just pull out your sliders to the point where, oh, Morani sees. This is actually, uh, I was watching um, um, Gray Gay and wow, and Silent Mike. Um, obviously, I'm more a little bit more like Silent Mike than I am like I am like um, Gray Gay, but he likes anti-seize too, and I'm a big fan of anti-seize. I like lots of anti-seize, so just one of those. There we are. So that basically has that. I think I'm gonna probably pull these off and I'm gonna paint them, but I wanna get the truck completely together before I really start painting and screwing around with stuff um, because I just wanna make sure everything fits and everything's good as far as that goes. So just so that you guys are aware that I probably will be paint, I'm, I'm gonna tear it apart and paint it. I gotta figure out an accent color for this truck. So the truck, I believe, I don't know what color it's gonna be yet. I'm bad for that. Um, but it's going to be a dark color. I think I think it's going to be black. Um, I think, but I'm not 100% sure. I might do a blue, a dark, dark blue, or a dark uh, charcoal gray, or something like that. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what we do. But I'm not. I don't, I'm not into huge flashy colors. But I would like to do some accent colors, like they do the calipers, maybe the uh, the leaf springs, uh, the traction traction bars. Sorry, and uh, some of that stuff. Um, but maybe let me know down below. It's going to be a dark color. I was thinking the race truck I was going to do orange accent. Um, and I don't know if I want to do this one the same. I don't know if I should keep them all the same so they're all, all the accent colors of all the trucks are the same. Or if I should do them different or I don't know. Like it's one of those things. I want it to be flashy but don't want it to be flashy. I'm not that type of guy where it's like super flashy. But that's, uh, you know, apparently that's the way to do it is to make it super flashy. So anyways... That has the, the brakes for this um, done, obviously just on this front corner. Um, I'll do the other one off camera because it's, or maybe I'll time lapse it tomorrow. Um, but we're gonna do, I, I'm gonna do some stuff on my three quarter ton this weekend. Um, and we're gonna do some work on this. Maybe we'll get the control arms final bolted in. Uh, I don't have the shocks yet because I don't have my plates. Um, I'm making my own plates um, for this. Um, and I'm gonna make a bunch of other sets so they will be on the website when the website gets up. Something else, uh, you have until Friday, I'm giving away an extra large Steed sweatshirt, or not sweatshirt, uh, hoodie. I call them sweatshirts, hoodie. Um, if you go to go back uh, a couple episodes or a couple videos, you just comment on there, like and comment, and you'll be entered to win it. It's free, I'm shipping it free. You don't have to pay nothing, you don't have to buy nothing, 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 nothing. So uh, just go there, comment and like the, the video. And uh, anyways, we will, I'm going to call it a night for tonight. I've had enough for today and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.